Hello, Brightness, and welcome back to another X Wing flight video brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. As always, my name is Phil, and today we have a Rebel on Imperial showdown for you. So it'll be quite interesting to see how this Rebel list goes up against this Imperial list. But joining me for this, we have. Hi, guys, it's Amy. It's great to be back. Hey, Amy, welcome back. It's been a bit of time since we've actually had you on the channel, but looking forward to seeing what you think of these two lists. Um, obviously, we've got some Imperials on here. As we all know, that you are a big fan of the Imperial lists. It, yeah, they make me very happy. <laughs> I don't blame you. I'm a big <laughs> fan of the Imperials as well. Um, but today we actually have myself flying Rebels, which I don't do very often. And we've got Jace flying the Imperials. So let's have a quick rundown through the lists. So what we have for myself on the Rebel side, we have a Blade Squadron Veteran B-Wing, a Gold Squadron Veteran Y-Wing with Dorsal Turret, a Green Squadron Pilot A-Wing with Starbird Slash and Crackshot, a Red Squadron Veteran T-65 X-Wing with Servo Motor s fills and Dead Eye Shot, and rounding the list out, we had the Blue Squadron Scout U-Wing with the Pivot Wing and Tactical Officer. So a lot of ships, not many upgrades, uh, but hopefully the massive hull and shields I have will help me out. And uh, what do we have with Jace? So with Jace, we have a couple of my favorite ships. So we have got Rex the Breath in the Tide Defender with Jamming Beam, Advanced Sensors and Duke. Uh, Same Marana in the normal box standard normal TIE fighter with marksmanship and Lieutenant Sai in the Lambda or, or commonly known as the Space Cow. Um, I, I always quite happily keep it with that uh, that nickname in my case. So uh, Sai has got the Jamming Beam, Darth Vader, Direct Krennic, Shield Upgrade, Fire Control System and ST321 title card. Nice, so a lot of upgrades there on the Space Cow. Um, oh yes. I'm wondering how much of a space cow it is now, because I know that obviously used to be the first edition sort of endearing nickname for it, because obviously it had just the forward arc and it couldn't turn around very quickly. But now that it's got that rear arc, it's definitely a lot better. Yeah, it, it, it is good. It is quite interesting. I keep forgetting that it has got a rear arc, I have to admit. But as yeah. always, it's still good fun. I mean, I haven't actually flown the Lambda very often in second edition, and I was flying against one the other day, and I was like, oh, this is great. Oh, oh no, it's got a rear arc. Oh, no, I forgot about that. Um, so that was quite interesting, but it, I still think the Lambda is a really cool ship. Um, and I'm really looking forward to when they re-release that in second edition to see if they introduce any new pilots for it as well. Mm. Yeah, that would be quite nice to see. I mean, there's quite a few ships that we're all looking forward to, but definitely the Lambda that hasn't had its re-release yet. So I'm, I'm happy to get another version of it. Yeah, I'll be interested to see if we actually do get um, re-releases anymore. I know the FFG were doing them for quite a time, and then they sort of stopped that and just carried on with new ships. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if AMG do start filtering the older ships back in in new packaging so i think some of them are really difficult to get hold of now if you didn't happen to play first edition so it'd be quite nice if they were to do that especially for ships like the lambda um there's the punisher uh, quite a few other ships as well actually that could do with that but we'll just have to wait and see what comes up. We've obviously got the new packs coming very soon in the Fury of the First Order and the Republic B-Wings, so we're all excited for those as well. I'm excited. Yeah, this, they do look really cool. Anyway, back to the game, and it looks like we've got a bit of a joust up in that top corner there, with everything on Jace's side literally facing down on three-fifths of my ships. And normally I'd be quite happy with that, but there is a TIE Defender there, and they're, they're a bit scary. I love my Defenders. A bit sad that I can't feel three of them together in a list anymore, but they're still scary to go against, even if it's literally just one. Yeah. 
definitely I can see why you can't do three though because I've run two together and they are incredibly powerful um three would just be it would just be rude um so I can definitely see why you can't do that again a little bit of a shame but I think it's a a good call from yeah. FFG to do that I mean three hull four shields that ridiculous dial that they've got um, some of those named pilots as well. You're looking at Rex, that's brilliant. Riyadh's brilliant. Vader is obviously just quite scary. Can't get much to go with him, but he's also really good. And even just the basic um, defenders are still really good. So yeah, I think being able to field three of them would just be a little bit too much. See, everyone says it's too much. I think that's perfect. But that's just like my evil in a Sith. Yeah saying no it's fine so looking at the ships at the moment i can see it looks like director credit's ability is tagged on with rex lebrath um did you want to quickly run through what director credit actually allows so Kranich is something that i've not actually used before um but basically before placing the voice before placing forces, you assign the optimised prototype condition to another friendly ship. Um, while you perform a primary attack against that ship locked by a friendly ship with the direct to Krennic upgrade, you may spend one hit or crit or focus result. If you do, you choose one, the defender loses a shield or they flip, down, flip one of their face down damage cards and hope that it's a direct hit or a fuel leak or a hull breach. Any of them would be good. <laughs> I mean, that works quite well with Rex or Brath's ability in that he just basically does that anyway. So after you perform an attack with his, if you're evading, expose one of the defender's damage cards. So you could potentially be exposing two damage cards in a turn. That's, that's actually quite scary. It's so. a good combination. I really like the look of it. It's one I may need to pinch and test out for myself. <laughs> We'll see how it looks. Yeah, I mean, especially for four points as well. It's not exactly an expensive upgrade, and it also gives the lander the target lock as well, mm. which is just really good. So I think that's definitely something that's worth looking into, especially against a rebel list where most ships have quite a lot of hull. So you could be, I mean, you could potentially, if you look at say the X wing, you could just be like absolutely destroying that by pulling out a direct hit there and like even on the white wing if he's got two face down and they're both direct hits and you pull them out that's that's scary oh yes and there's darth vader on the board as well which is love that yeah. upgrade so much i mean darth, darth vader is really good um it's just he's really handy Stripping tokens, dealing damage, or giving you the that force token to spend. It's just it's got so much utility to it, which is why obviously it is going to be 14 points, which is obviously a sizable amount of points, but I mean in this list it it looks like it's gonna work quite well. And as well, I think we still can't forget about say Mirada as well. That's a great ship. While you perform an attack, you may spend one crit result. If you do deal one face down damage card to the defender, then cancel your remaining results. That is, again, another little brilliant tactic, especially when you combine that with marksmanship. So the ability oh, yes. to change a hit to a crit, you can almost guarantee the damage going through. Obviously not always going to be that good. You might have like a really good roll and be like, you know what, they don't have that much of aid, so I want to see if I can get that but still it's a really good tactic and this list plays very much to the high damage output side of things and it looks like we get your target lock from the b-wing on to rexler trying to find that target lock under the uh arc indicator there now as an imperial player which ship are you would you be looking to try and take out first i know there's no aces in there there's not a lot of abilities but which ship for you at the moment is the one that you'd be like oh, i'd like to get rid of that quicker 
Uh, at the minute for me, it's a tie between the B wing and the U wing. Okay, interesting. I mean, they've got good offense, both three dice attacks. Mm. So, and that B wing's got a pretty cool dial, actually. I'm not going to lie for a B wing. It's um, it can be fairly maneuverable. Obviously, it's not as good as some of the known pilots who, when you stress them, they absolutely love it. But still, it can nip around quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, I would be a bit more scared about the X-Wing, but it's got a little bit of catching up to do for the moment, so... Yeah, it's definitely trying for that flank maneuver there. And I think for myself, I think trying to get the Defender out of the way is going to be quite a strong option. Um, we've seen in the past how Defenders are just incredibly tricky to take out, especially with their ability to get that evade action after the speed three to five. The sooner you can get Rexner off the table, I think the better. I mean, I know you've got Lieutenant Sire, he's a big target there, right there, and you could probably do a lot of damage to him really quickly, but I still think that if you can take out Brath first, that would probably be, I think, the best option. No, I agree. I mean, um... In terms of moving around the board, a defender is a lot more slippery to get hold of, especially with those K turns. Mm. Whereas the Lambda, it's a big ship, it's a big fat ship. It, it's it's very slow to get around the board. So, in a way, it's um, quite easy to catch up to it and to try and pin it down as compared to the defender and the tie. I mean, looking at what's in front of it, it is the three slower ships on my side that are facing up against it. But again, as you said, the defend the the Lambda isn't the quickest of ships. And with only one evade dice, getting multiple shots coming into it is going to be quite tricky for it. But I think having Rexler there, I think he's just so much more of a target. And there's his target lock as well, so... And I believe that is um, coordinated from Lieutenant Sai. Then that will allow Sai with the ST321 title to also get the same token and target lock, I believe. Yeah. And there we go, there's the speed three maneuver. He's got the target lock, taking a focus and the evade. So double modded shot, most likely going into the Ewing. I could imagine we're gonna see probably everything shooting into that Ewing there. Yeah, it'd be rude not to when it's right there. Yeah. I mean especially if if Rexler is able to strip its shields then you'll see Sane have that marksmanship shot straight in. And I can imagine we'll see a Vader trigger to get rid of some green tokens that might be there. Although the Ewing took the target lock, if I remember rightly. Let's see what where Vader is going to cause some pain. Yeah. Just going straight into the U-Wing, so that'll be a shield gone, so there's no green token to lose, so yeah. We'll see if this U-Wing can survive this first round of shooting. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not particularly hopeful on that. I mean, it does have two of eight dice, so we'll see. It might be okay. <laughs> So let's see. Oh, that's not too bad. It's range two from Rex if he goes for it. Yeah, I don't see why not. He's got the target lock there. He'll be able to juke one of them as well, so. Good roll. Oh, he hasn't uh, rolled it yet. <laughs> there, there is no, he, he's still, still waiting for the roll, but 
It's got the target lock. It's still not a bad roll. Hit crit. Yeah, it's still a good roll. Uh, get spend of that target lock. Ooh, focus. Oh, if it was me, I probably wouldn't spend it, but... Are we going to see Krennic's ability triggering? I think we... I think that was Krennic's ability triggering there. What evade and most likely going to juke that down. So that is all the shields gone from the U Wing already. And this will be where Sand will be hoping that she's got Bullseye, but I can pretty much guarantee, yep, there's Bullseye. So yeah. I mean, for my advantage, I do have three of eight dice this time, but again, she can just say nope. <laughs> so that is focus crits. That's a really tough one, actually. Do you just say, I'm going to use the ability? Put that to spread of the focus. But surely mastership would allow us to turn that to a crit. Let's have a look. Oh, the crit still goes through anyway. Uh, what do we have on that on that blue squadron? Loose stabilizer. That's really not very good right now. So after you execute a non-straight maneuver, suffer one damage and repair this card. Now, I don't know if that's really going to have much of an effect. So the advantage I do have is I have initiative, so it means I will get to shoot before Psy. Uh, so maybe be able to strip that token that he's got there, but we'll have to wait and see. Or I think you kind of have to just go for. I think you kind of got to go for Rexler though, haven't you? Yeah, I hate to admit it. it he is close. It, it, is it in a great position to be shot at? Mm. Yeah, I, I think you've got to just go all in for Rexler and hope for the best. I mean, the U-Wing's got target lock there. The Y-Wing's got focus range too. But one hit isn't really going to do much. Nope, there's the evade. Uh, but the B-Wing, B-Wing U-Wing hopefully might be able to cause a bit more damage there, fingers crossed. Trying to think back as to all the defenders we've seen on the channel, how many of them have actually gone down or stuck around to the end. But I think it's a higher percentage of managed to make <laughs> it to the end of the game. They are difficult to take down. Yeah. Ooh. Two two focuses to the crit. Definitely spend that focus there. Absolutely have to do it. Oh, and there we go, make him spend his evade, so that's not bad, but you're kind of hoping for some more blanks there. Can the U-Wing now punch past? Oh, has the U-Wing already shot? would appear the Ewing might have already shot, so Rexler came out of that completely unscathed. Uh, 
Oh no, my apologies, the U-Wing is initiative two. So that's why he hasn't shot yet. In my head, I had them all done as initiative three, so. These are the target lock there. Oh, that's just too, that's just really good. I like that, that's good. Yeah, two hits of the crit, so that's definitely a crit going through on the U-Wing. So that's a hit crit. What do we reckon we're going to see on that crit? Direct hit? Direct hit? Uh, looks like... I think it might be wounded pilots. Yep, yes. wounded pilots. So after you perform an action, roll one attack die on a hit or crit result, gain one stress token. Ouch. That yeah. U-Wing. Well, I mean, he survived. Oh, yeah, he's, I mean, I, he's I, done good. I, I'll take that. And he's got a range two shot going. Has he said who he's going for? I mean, he's got to be going for Rexler, hasn't he? Mm. No. Oh, is he going to go he's for going, Atlanta? He's going into sight. I, personally, I think that's the wrong wrong place to be sending those shots because the target lock is on Rexler. So that was a big mistake there on my part, I think. Splitting fire. Definitely should not have done that. Not gonna lie. That was um that was silly. With those crits on there, not really going to be doing much with that Ewing other than trying to get a block in there. That looks like the dial on the Ewing has managed to get itself deleted. That is one of the downsides on TTS. Obviously in real life you can't exactly delete a dial. You can lose it under the table. I've seen that happen a few times but you can't delete the dial. Yeah. But that, that uh, was definitely in Jace's favour there. Now, obviously, the U Wing is going to be trying to do a straight maneuver and probably wanting to fix loose stabiliser. So it's going to go for a block. So, would you say that the best thing to do is to try and anticipate that and just? get right over the top or just accept that there's going to be a block in there and then go into the Y-Wing? Mm. Or even the B-Wing? That's... What do you yeah. try and say? Sir Karen? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I mean, that U-Wing is so close to been taken down however it's quite likely it's just going to get itself in a position to bump there mm. I mean you can almost guarantee that Rex is going to be in a good position to do that 4k because everything needs to move up but you've got to be a bit careful because that x-ring is coming in at the side so do you start turning around to try and do turn with Sane and Sai to counteract the X-Wing coming in, or do you just keep going for this block? Actually, I'd say keep going for the block. There's more ships in front in front than there is of that one X-Wing coming along at the side. I mean, I know the X-Wings on their own are actually quite scary. Hmm. They can be quite tricksy. Yeah, but yeah, I think maybe go for the block. Or anticipate the block, rather. Well, I think we might have all dials down. So there is the U-Wing doing the one forward. So definitely looking for a block. I mean, potentially Psy could just do a zero manoeuvre and Sane could try and sit in over the top on a three forward. That would work, but be an interesting one. Uh, so... Doesn't take a stress for his action off of wounded pilot. Uh, what action? Uh, 
should take the target lock there. Interesting. Not sure if I'd have target. Like looking back on this, not sure if I'd have target locked the lambda because. Uh, well, I don't think I'm going to get a shot at it because it's likely to bump. Yeah, I think maybe moving that target lock onto Rex there would have been a bit more of a wiser choice. Yeah. Oof. And the Green Squadron pilot has just hurt itself on that rock. Not good. No, <laughs> not good at all. Safe to say, so far, not flying this particularly well. But here comes the X-Wing, hoping to do something. There it goes. The B-Wing's trying to use the u as cover, hoping that that's the blocker, so it still gets its shot off. Now we get to see whether the block did happen. Let's see. Oh, big, big bump there from Sai. Probably anticipated that everything was going to go a bit quicker there, actually. Try to do the three. Yeah. Risky, I don't know how well that would have worked. Um, but there is same turning towards the X-Wing. Maybe offering herself up as a sacrifice or just to try and start wicking it down and just spinning around to get a better view on it. And there is that 4K from Rexler that we're anticipating. Yeah. That's going to be quite painful for everything there. Oh, yeah. Now I'm having a better look at it. Yeah, I can imagine that Rexler is just going to try and take out the U Wing there. Or he could just take that range one straight into the Y Wing. But the U Wing might. Looks like it would have a shot on Sane if it's not dealt with. Yeah, I think the U-Wing is the uh, the better option. We'll see what tokens. Jazz has taken the focus. There's the Darth Vader trigger. Doing it into... Oh, the B-Wing by the look of it. Okay. So maybe that is where the focus will be, but I've taken the shield on it instead to keep that green token, because you know what? A range one shot like that into the... Lambda, i definitely like to have some modifications there, or at least have a little bit of protection from Rexler. Now, does he want to try and take out the U-Wing? Looks like it is going into the U-Wing with two of eight dice there. Oh, that's not a great shot. No. Let's have a look. Oh, the U-Wing survives with... Oh, that's... Nope. Sorry, I forgot about Duke. Bye-bye, U-Wing. <laughs> and you're out of there. Yeah, definitely painful that. And just because it's Rexler and it can, 
exposing that final damage card, which was a console fire. Not that it matters at this stage. Bye bye, you wing. Bye bye, you wing. They're an interesting ship. They either do really well or they just get blown up in my experience. James flies them really well, actually. Ooh, not a bad shot there from Same. Yeah, it's done quite good. And I think just going to use your ability to put a damage straight through. Yeah, why not? Just get that damage straight through on the uh, next thing. That is good. I like that. She's one of the newer fighters, isn't she? From the. She's one of those from Battlefront 2, yeah. So she came as part of Inferno Squadron. I think she's one of the cheaper ones in Inferno Squadron, actually, because um, some of the other ones are quite expensive. And of course, it's just clicks where that name has come from. Yeah, sorry. I've not got very far in Battlefront 2. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, she's Inferno 4. Inferno 4. I'm going to have to stick the PlayStation on now. <laughs> well, I mean, you can wait till after we've finished. If... Oh, yeah, obviously, but... <laughs> um, so now we've got B-Wing into Lambda. That's not great. I mean... No. Oh, got a target lock there, so that's that's okay. Come on, get some good dice in there. And uh, that was a blank set. So three hits, that's not bad. Does have the shield upgrade on there. But that is three of those five shields down, so that's not too bad. Can't complain about start. that. Yeah. See if why we can double down on that. Also, range one shot there with a focus. Could potentially see side down to half health. Yep, yeah, definitely got the offensive there. Oh, he manages to keep it above half, but that is all shields down there. Now going with the Red Squadron. Could, could go into... Looks like it is going into Psy there. Focusing the fire this round by the looks of it, which is what I should have done last round as well. So range two with a focus or range three with no focus. Three, three evades or two evades. Oh, it's a big decision. Looks like we are going into Psy here. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Definitely spend that focus. That's a that is a crit going through. Ooh. Hit crit. That is half points. And the crit is direct hit. No. That is really good for the X Wing. That's all the damage that was missing last turn. Yep. And now we're going to see Psy retaliate. It's going to be a big attack as well. There's going to be four dice coming back from Psy into... I probably anticipate the B-Wing, as the B-Wing's already taken a shield. Yeah, it looks as if it's going to get a yeah. bit of revenge. I mean, of the two there, I would say that the B-Wing is definitely the bigger threat because it's got the better gun on it. 
I don't know why we've got the dorsal turret, but oh, that's good. That is just good. That that is good. And even better. <laughs> that's all shields gone on the B wing. Ouch! What's the crit? Uh, luckily, the crit didn't go through because there were still three shields there, so no oh, crit there. If it was the Y wing, that crit would have gone through, but on the B wing, he just scrapes through there. But I had managed to close that points gap down, and then it swung back open again. But we've got the X-Wing now getting into the fray a bit. Hopefully the A-Wing can also hit the gas and get in there a lot quicker because I think we need some more shots coming in after having lost the U-Wing. But whilst the players are getting their dials down, uh, just to remind everyone that if you do like what we're doing here on the channel, a great way to support us is via Patreon. The link for that is in the description below, and you can support us from just as little as £2 a month, which will get your name shouted out on the next video. Or you can support us for £4 a month, which will get you a shout out on the channel, and also your name in the credits for the duration of the time that you are a Patreon of ours. So... Lambda. Keep going straight or turn in? It's a tough call. If it was me, I'd say go straight. However, I'm wary that I'm probably going to bump, depending on where the others are going. I'm just saying that you've got initiative, haven't you? So you're the B-Wing and Y will move first. Yeah. I'd say move forward, keep him rear arc, because obviously you've got the rear arc. Yeah. I think that's probably a good idea, because looking at it, the B-Wing wouldn't be able to turn around and keep guns on the lander. The Y-Wing could, but that would be really interesting move there. The Y wing could potentially do the 4K over the top, but I think the B wing, unfortunately, is going to have to. Uh... Well, unless it did a one talent to the right, well, that could be quite cool actually. One talent to the right for the B wing, and then a 4K for the Y wing. Although it'd be really, really close if that Y wing could make that 4K. It'd be interesting to see. Say that it does have the dorsal turret, so it could just do a uh, two turn to the right. But again, it, it kind of comes down to what the B wing is doing as to what kind of space the Y wing has there. And it, you've also got to take into account space for the X wing as well, because it's getting quite close in there. The only two ships I would say that have quite a nice amount of room to work with is the A-Wing, the TIE Fighter, and probably the Defender because he's got that perfect knowledge. He can just always do whatever he wants, although I don't think a 4K would be a good idea this time. I think that might be potentially blocked. Yeah, I think maybe a 3 forward could potentially be gotten away with. Um... Yeah. Make use of full throttle and have the focus token on as well. Definitely will. There's the A Wing getting off the rock, getting rid of his stress. Focus boost again. They're pretty quick, those A Wings, I'll tell you. Who's going next? Oh, there is that one talent from the B Wing. I like it. Hoping to catch Sai there. 
and potentially causing some issues for Rexa. Ooh, bump there from the Y It looks like the Y Wing was trying the 4K and doesn't quite make it over. So that is a little bit disappointed for the Y Wing. It does have his dorsal turret though, so potentially still getting some shots in there. X-Wing coming in to line up a good shot. Let's see what the lander did. Luckily, Jace has got nice big dials for us to see. So that is a three forward. So that is quite a nice target there for the B-Wing and the X-Wing, depending on where Rex Rexler ends up. I just... I just hope for a bump with Rexa, to be honest. That would be lovely right now. That would be quite good. So, coordinating Rexler a focus, gaining a focus himself. And uh, then, because of the title, getting a target lock up within range three of the ship that he has coordinated. It's a really good ability, that. Interesting going for the X-Wing. I would have been tempted to go for the B-Wing or the Y-Wing there. But... Yeah, I would have said the B-Wing, just because it's got four hole left. Get yeah. rid of I think you've just got a better shot there as well. You've got range two out the back i'm not sure if the lambda has arc and it looks like Sane was trying to do a k turn and didn't have enough room in there so good block there from the a wing uh, what did what has rex look got in his bag of tricks Ooh, going slow with a one back. Okay. Now, I don't like that. Because that, <laughs> means, that means he gets a shot. I don't want Rex to have a shot. So that is... I'd say less than ideal, but... It looks like you're going to have three ships getting a shot into Rexler there with the Y-Wing, the X-Wing, and the A-Wing. Oh, the Lambda doesn't have arc on... on the B-Wing. Oh, the X-Wing, sorry. Despite the time lock was there. Is this a Darth Vader trigger? Uh, yes. I think as long as it's in the firing arc, it should st it's still okay to use. Yeah, that's fine. I was just... There's so many where it's firing arc and so many where it's forward firing arc. I was just... I had a bit of a mind blank there as to which one it was. So there's another damage on the B-Wing. So, Rexler is going to take a shot at the Red Squadron. Please don't hurt him too much. Ouch. Uh, ow. Ouch. Fortunately, Duke is not live because he doesn't have an evade table. Actually, does he? Did he do the evade action? I can't see down there behind him. Uh, it's not spending the focus, so just dual crits. That's still pretty crazy. Oh, and he is, he is juking there, so got that evade. Kind of got to spend the focus to flip them both, haven't you, really? Yeah, it's got to be done. Yeah, you definitely want to avoid 
loses all that there. But are we going to see the onslaught into Rexler or try to take out Psy? I still think at this point, if if you've got it, you've got to go in for Sire. I think you start with the A wing first. Okay, looks like Range One dorsal turret from the Gold Squadron. How many tokens can you strip? Done. This is where it's just going to be horrendous. Two hits. Oh, spend the evade. No, go for the aiming first. Hey, a wing first. Not only that, got crack shot live with that one. Of course. Don't see crack shot very often anymore. I think a lot more people are fans of other things like Dead Eye Shot and Marksmanship seem to have taken a bit of precedence over crack shot. Yeah, I have to admit, I don't see it used very often up here either. Um... Marksmanship, yep. Dead eye shot, yep. Yeah. Crack shot, not so much. I mean, I am a big fan of dead eye shot. I think it's one of my favourite cheap talent slots at the moment. And marksmanship is also really good. There's a lot of ships that really work with a combination of either dead eye shot or marksmanship. And if you can get them both on there, that's ridiculous. Yep. So let's have a look. Range one from the B Wing into Rexler. Can we finally do some damage on Rexler? 4v3. No tokens on the B Wing, tokens on the Defender. That's not a bad roll. No. Come on, Rexler. No. Damage. No. <laughs> That's, That's, not, damage. A roll. That's, That's th not a roll. That's not a roll. That's three damage. That is brilliant. That is exactly what we want to see from a rebel no. standpoint. <laughs> Those dice rolls are not what you want to see. <laughs> I mean, Defense-wise, anyway. Yeah, in all fairness, he's had everything shoot at him and only lost three shields so he's done all right there yeah it's done good but we could see if this goes ooh, two hits so definitely going to have at least one hit going through in on the b wing well that's two more hits on the b wing the b wing's down to one so So it's definitely still in Jace's favour at this point. Um, again, we have another interesting set of moves coming up with the positioning of the X-Wing and the A-Wing. Is Sai going to continue his slow march down the side of the border? Is he going to turn in now? I kind of think he's got to turn in, otherwise he won't have enough room. Yeah. Um, yeah, he definitely needs to turn in. Does mean he's more than likely sacrificing 
the shot. I mean, the B wing and the Y wing both need to try and clear those stresses, which is going to be not the easiest for them. The Y wing could just do a one forward, but the B wing's probably the B wing is going to struggle to clear that stress and get a, get an action. I think even if it did a three forward over the top, it might still might still bump. Yeah, it's a close call. I mean, I reckon we'll see Rex pulling another 4K. Well, just depends on where the A-Wing ends up as to whether that's going to be viable for him. Let's see if, uh, yeah, 4K. Jay's definitely taking his time to work out what he's doing, and I don't blame him because it's not the easiest of positions to be in right now. I think it's it's definitely easier for me at this point. But if he's wanting to try and keep shots on, it's definitely quite tricky for him. I think the only ship that is likely to have a shot this turn without sacrificing itself with the Lambda is Rexler. I don't, Sane's obviously stressed, so can't get turned around quick enough to get a shot. Size turn will more than likely not give him an arc on anything. So again, while we wait for the DARS, obviously we do have an Instagram page as well where we do post up pictures of some of the lists that you may see in the future on the channel or just other things that are going on in and around the game nights at Entoyment where we normally play. So it's worth checking that out to see what kind of shenanigans you may see or just what's happening in and around in our local area. Um, that is at Out of Arc on Instagram. There we go, the dials are set. And just working out which order to move the ships. As all of my ships are now left at the I3 set, so just making sure we get them in the right order. So X-Wing straight over the top there. Nicely done. Yeah, that, that fit really nicely. Depends on what side does. I don't know if I'm going to have a shot, but still look pretty good. And who's going next? Clicking on the board going on, but not entirely sure what's happening. There's another dial disappeared. Wouldn't surprise me. TTS loves to 
have fun. The one thing that is going to be quite interesting is the A-Wing does actually have the Starbird Slash talent. So after you fully execute a maneuver, you may choose one enemy ship you moved through. That ship gains one strain token. Then if you were in that ship's firing arc, you gain one strain token. So it looks like saying it's most likely going to be getting a strain token as, well, it's not going to be moving before the A-Wing. So there we go, going over the top, removing the stress. Oh, that's an interesting position as to whether that's good for blocking the defender, but there is a strain token for Sane there. Not that anything's really going to be able to capitalise on that, but it's an interesting one to see. Don't see the starboard slash very often. So it looks like focus and then just sitting there. I think that is a good idea, actually. Hoping for that block. 4K. It's hard to say. I'm not sure if the 4K would fit there either. I don't think it will. If it did, it would be very tight. Yeah. But let's see, now we've got the B-Wing and Y-Wing to go. B-Wing just doing the one forward, clearing the stress and bumping. I think, I think you know what, that's probably the best that it could do at that point. And the Y-Wing doing the too hard, trying to keep its guns in the fight there. Doesn't remove the stress. Now, what did Psy do? If he did stop, that would be hilarious. It, <laughs> I do love the stop her uh, stop moves. I, I don't think it'd be I don't think it'd be very good for Psy at the moment with only three health left. Ooh, one bank. And it looks like the X wing is in arc as well at the rear. Hmm. Well, the red squad definitely has sight in arc. It'd be interesting to see. It's very close. It's very close there as to whether Sai has the X wing in arc. But it does look like we might be seeing the B wing and X wing getting a chance to see if it can take Sai out. Just debating his action. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a coordinate here again. There's a lot of thinking in this game. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely, this is definitely trying to make sure that I think Jace really wants to make sure he's getting what he wants to do right, which I don't blame him, to be honest. I really don't blame him. But it definitely looks like triggering the coordinate there. Give him Rex with a focus, go to the focus himself, and then obviously the time lock with SC321. Moving the target up from the X-Wing or leaving it on the X-Wing? That is the question. I think he'd be better off leaving it on the X-Wing because he definitely does not have arc on the B-Wing. Yeah, and with only three hole left, it uh, might be the last chance it could be used. Yeah, saying that he did move the target lock over, which is interesting to say the least. Yeah, surprised by that actually that he moved that target lock over. 
Uh, this said landing on the obstacle there. Does she get another strength token for good measure? No. So it clears all the tokens. Now here's what we want to know. What has Rexler done? It's okay. 4k. Yes. Does it fit? It does. That is... Nicely that is, done. That is sad times for the rebellion right there. That is sad times, but that was quite well done. Unfortunately, I think that probably means it's going to be uh bye-bye Mr. B-Wing. No, put it on the X-Wing. Okay, going straight in for the Red Squadron there. Check and see if we have it our fader trigger. And we do not. Well, I would have said that was in. Wow. So no Darth Vader trigger there. So now we move on to Rex Lowe, who's going to take his shot, presumably, whilst he's got the target lock, into... So range two on the B-Wing, range three on the X-Wing. He's going to try and take out that B-Wing. I think that's the right choice there. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of points there. 21 points left to score. Um, you're pretty much going to guarantee it through. I mean, Rex's ability to just throw that through, can't it? Yeah, easily. Or no, it exposes expose the damage card, doesn't it? Uh, yes, actually. Okay. Let me double check it. Ah, uh, yeah, they, after the attack hits, um, exposed one of the defender's damage cards. Okay, so... Exposing the damage card, which was... It's like another console fire. But does it kill? Yep. Yeah. It's it's death anyway. So Bye, that B -wing. is that's the B wing down. And the crit that it received was the loose stabilizer. Oh, and structural damage. So it would appear oh that was Krennic. Oh. So spending for Krennic. Mm -hmm. And there's finally equal amounts of ships on either team. <laughs> three against three. I mean, it's taken Jason a while to get there, but... You know, I think that might have been done wrong there, actually. Oh, okay. Because it says you may spend one hit. Oh, no. The focus result, yeah. So, yeah, it was done right. Spent the focus result to expose that damage card. That is really powerful, actually, for all of four points. It's good. I, might, I definitely need to start using it more. And uh, no damage there from the A-Wing into Psy, but it has stripped that force token. Range one shot from the Y-Wing. Can he do the business? Can he do it? Oh, hit crit. That's not bad, but there's a lot of tokens on Rexler there. Plenty of tokens for Rexler there, so he's got his choice. And um, can... The Red Squadron finish off Lieutenant Sai there. Oh, 
it just sneaks a range one as well. Oh, that's so close. Have the rebellion avenge their B wing. Four dice with a focus. The answer there is yes. Yeah. Yes, it can. I could see that coming. <laughs> Obligatory focus spend, but that is one dead lambda there. The only problem is that's the only points that I've managed to get so far on the board is from the lambda. And with 11 minutes left, if I can sneak one damage in, one damage in on Rexler, that would be incredible. But I don't know how easy that's going to be. I mean, admittedly, the X-Wing and the A-Wing could always just turn around pretty quickly and be okay. Because the Talon from the X-Wing and the K-Turn from the A-Wing. <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be quite, I think that'd be good actually. A Talon from the X-Wing to, towards ship left and a 5k from the A-Wing with, I don't know, a one bank to the right from the Y-Wing, setting up like a bit of an arc, a bit of a box there. It would definitely make Rex have to think twice. Because he's lost that coordinate there that was allowing him to have that focus, evade, and target lock, which was really powerful. Keeping Rex and Sai so close to each other the whole way through was really well flown there by Jace. It was just unfortunate with that block on Sane that left us sort of out of the game for a little bit. Saying that, if she does a... She's not sitting on the gas cloud, is she? She's just sitting next to it. If she does a shot... She's sat on it. Oh, yeah, is she? She's sat on it, but she's not going to be going over it again. Whatever she does, we'll clear that. She definitely needs to do some hard right hand turn to get try and try and get back into it. Definitely. I think we'll probably see a too hard from saying back into it. To be honest, too hard, maybe a barrel roll across, but again, saying and Rex to go after all of my stuff. So they're gonna be able to they'll know what they need to do with their actions. So again, just waiting on looks like Rexler's dial. And it's now set into the final eight minutes. So with the way the points are, they're still quite close. One hit on Rexa going through, and that really swings it because that's a lot of points coming back there. You look at 48 points for a half on Rexler. There's a three talent, as we said, for the X Wing. Three sloop for the A-Wing. I like it. Oh, 
one heart. Interesting. Interesting. Are you trying to get the block there well, on Rex? Yeah, so two heart though, not one heart. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, well, Sane's done the two, so I mean, a cheeky barrel would get her arc. I don't know whether that's going to block Rex or just get the shot in there though. I think the one bank would have been better. Remove the stress and get the focus. Then you could have had options there of shooting either Sane or Rexler, but let's just see. It's like going for that barrel roll. Uh, but is that going onto the gas cloud? Uh, no, it is. Oh, uh, no. Moving forward. Moving forward, you're fine. Middle and. Middle and back, you're not, so. Yeah, so there's fine. So getting her a shot on to. The wiring, I think Aiming might be just a bit too far away. I think the wiring is a good, a good shot there for saying, let's see what Rexler is doing. Rexler is right in the middle of the pack. Could get a nice range one shot at the A-wing though. Yeah, but I... Does he want to try and do a boost to see if he can get out the A-wing's arc though? Hmm. But that does put him closer to the X-Wing. It's definitely a great little box there that I managed to get on that, if I do say so myself. It's, very, it's going to be very tricky to slip out of it. I don't think there is... Like I said, the one, the one boost forward is probably the best option to avoid taking three shots, but again, puts closer to... Well, gets him a bit further away from the y wing but puts him closer to the X-Wing. Or do you just turtle up and take a focus? I'd take a focus. I mean, you've still got the target lock on the A-Wing there, so it's not like you're... Oh, there we go. There is the boost, which gets him out of arc of the eight wing. So taking less shots. Does it give him range one of the X wing? Can he take that X wing out in one shot? It's range one, so he could do it. Very big play there. Mm. Not like that. He's got the target lock. Yeah. He's, re he's remembering. No, he forgot the target lock. Uh, uh. Still going to juke it, which means that that is the final shield gone. And exposing the damage card, which is. Damaged engine. I think at this stage it's probably not going to make much of a difference. No, I mean to me it's as if maybe this is saving the target lock for next round if you can squeeze another one in. Potentially, but I still think that I'd have gone for it there. I would have really gone for it. But it does put those points very high now. Definitely need to get half on Rex as even standard chance. And that would be, that would do it by one point if you can get half on Rexler. That's without giving up any more points. But I think, I don't think we're going to see, I don't think we're going to get another turn in at this rate. 
No. One, one hit. Four evades should be fine. Fingers crossed. Absolutely fine. We may get one more. Well, range three, long shot onto the TIE Fighter. Basically the same dice back, 2d4. Oh, hit crit though. Oh, not bad. Oh, well, there's the two evades. Just checking. Oh no, crack shot was there, so it did actually cancel one. That's a panicked pilot on same. There are a lot of crits running around here. I don't think I've ever seen so many crits in one game. There is a lot. Yeah. So it range two from Gold Squadron. One hit. Not going to be enough. Range one back. Just needs one. Just needs one. No tokens to change this though. Uh, that's a hit crit. Oh no, two hits. Oh no, all of eight. So absolutely laughing it off. Oh, that was that was close. That was. And that was that, good. And that is in fact game. That got very close there towards the end. Some very methodical and deliberate flying from Chase there. And I tell you what, Rexler was flown very well. Very well. He's so trick like defenders are just so tricky to take down. I mean I I think, what do you need? Wedge to try and take them down or something? Or another defender? I'd say maybe another defender, but then again, Wedge. Yeah. Uh, or no, Fen. I think Wedge would have been quite nice. Ooh, yeah, Fen. Fen could do it. Yeah, but, Fen would relish it. <laughs> yeah. Again, really good game there from Jay. So well done. Uh, managing to preserve those final points. One more hit, it would have swung it, would have swung it, but it was still a really good game and it was really enjoyable to play that. So thanks to Jace for allowing us to record that game. Um, Amy, thank you very much for coming along and commentating that. I hope you enjoyed that. I know obviously you love seeing the defenders on the table. Uh, yes, definitely. Thank you for having me back and bringing a good Empire list. I really enjoyed that. Well done, guys. No worries. Well, hopefully we'll get some more Empire lists in the future for you. But as it is, guys, we're going to leave it there. So as I said, if you do want to support the channel, don't forget we have that Patreon with the link in the description below. But as always, please do like the video, click that subscribe button, and we will see you next time.